Hey guys, I'm Mary Dom with MD's Gym Mill Channel. I am coming to you live from my living room with a very skeleton crew. So I've got Instagram over here and Facebook over here. So bear with us because we are under a stay at home order from our governor here in the state of Florida. So first and uh, foremost, please and welcome. And what are you drinking for this happy hour? What's going on? Send us your comments, send us your questions. Tell us what's going on. And we have some feedback behind me here. So, first of all, today we're gonna do a wine tasting, but before we get to that, I wanna introduce my staff who's remote because we can't be together today under this stay at home order. So, right over here, Miss Judy Gannon, one of our producers. Hey Judy, where are you coming from? What's going on? Uh, I'm, we're, I'm sitting on the boat on the river right now. I got, I got Les back here fishing behind me. <laughs> so, and it looks like Kelly is online watching. Hi Kelly. Hey, I know that this is a little off the wall, but I've got an Instagram that's blank here. How do I fix this? Blank, black screen on my Instagram. Turn the camera around. Mike says it's coming up black. I know. Turn the camera around. No. How are we doing here, everybody? <laughs> You're doing a... Is that better? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, we are on a skeleton crew here. But anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go on with this. So. Miss Grace Gasparini over here, one of our assistants. What's going on with you? Oh, not a whole lot. Good. It's doing the thing. What you been up to? What's going on? Uh, pretty much just attending to this garden behind me. Yeah? Tell just us about it. Just the around the house. What are you guys drinking? I am drinking today. Let's see if you can see what I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking some cupcake, uh, Black Forest Decadent Red, which is under $10. That was the rule. Yes, yes. Grace, what are you drinking? Um, I have the Rosé of choice. Rosé? Which Rosé, you may ask? Which one? Um... Usually I go with the white dip and <laughs> I got you. I got you. Okay, guys. So, like I said, we're coming to you live from my living room. We are in self-quarantine. And we've got a lot of people uh, saying they're here with us. We got uh, Jenny. Yeah, we have, we have Lila. We have Kelly. We have Lisa. We have Brandy. Cool. All right. We are going to introduce our three wines, and behind me also, the beautiful beach scene you see is coming from uh, Heather De Lucente, our special guest who's going to be telling us about some wines today. Heather, are you there? I'm here. Ooh, hey. I couldn't hear you because of the waves. Hey, I'm how, you, how you doing? What are you drinking? I am now doing? drinking our first choice, which is uh, the Echo de Mami. Oh, sweet. Let me... Uh, I've got a little red in my hand, so guys, send us your pictures, send us your comments, tell us what's going on. What are you drinking today? It's Friday. I think it's Friday, isn't it? I'm really not sure anymore because yeah. we're all just... It is Friday. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to taste the Pinot Grigio Echo de Mani first. So, Heather, tell us, tell us about this wine, would you? Well, the Echo de Mani is an Italian wine, very contemporary, uh, first released in 1996 um, from the northeastern uh, region of Italy, um, which is best known for its Pinot you know, Grigio um, grapes. And also, which MD liked, is also the staging place for the movie Romeo and Juliet. Ah, oh, nice! I love it. Um, it is the Trianganis uh, region. Which, in order to be considered part of that region, it has to be a certain percent of grapes, which um, has to be, I believe, 85 percent Pinot Grigio, and I believe no more than 15 of the Chardonnay. It smells um, fruity. 
And the reason for that region is uh, it is on um, the sunny side of the Alps, so it has a milder winter, and um, it makes for a very crisp tasting wine. And look great. Uh, I, I want to taste this. It smells like strawberries. It smells like... Well, it is actually a citrus and floral aroma. Um, it's very crisp, uh, and that has to do with the way it's made. It smells... So everybody wants to take a sip. It smells and amazing. Talk more about it. Now, these, these legs... Hi, Brandy, are... hi, Brandy Jensen. Hi, Michael Doran, all out there watching. Hey. You guys love me. Miss you, too. Kevin, hi. Hey, guys. Now, this, this whole legs thing they talk about, what's the deal? I don't see any legs with my white wine. Well, you're going to see that more with the red. You're right. You're like me. <laughs> huh? Is it going to get up and run away? <laughs> <laughs> So she's referring to, um, you'll see it on the side of your glass when you take a sip. Um, it's almost like, it looks like a syrupy drip down. Ah, I don't see it um, on my white, but that's yeah, like I said, the red. I don't really see it with this type of wine. This one yeah. tastes, this one sounds but like a... The, 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 the term good legs means a, a, a very good wine, a very full body wine. I thought that was cut out of my legs. <laughs> oh my god. Seriously, I have a customer, one of my bars. This wine also uh, um, pairs well with uh, your poultry dishes, um, fish, mostly like shrimp, um, or even a white pasta, like uh, a white, white pasta. Okay, well, you know what? I like it. It's okay. Not my favorite, so uh, let's have a little red. I love reds. We've drank a lot of reds together, Heather. Red. Are there any questions on this one? No? Nobody's asking No, questions. no questions. Lila's drinking Alka-Seltzer right now. Lila! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite. I'll need that after this. That's All far right. from wine. This was... Uh, that is far from wine. This was written in by uh, Brandy Heberlin. She said, please review this wine. It's one of her favorites. So we did. It's the Menage et Toi Midnight Red Blend. So we're going to do that. Now, Heather, if I show up somewhere and I got a cork or I got a screw top, are they going to make fun of me? What's the deal? Uh, well, if they know what they're talking about, no. Um, uh, due to our... It's not. It's not about the price of the wine that the cork's all about. Uh, screw, uh, screw pass compared to cork. It just has to do with oxygenation, um, and it depends on the wine. Um, it could be a very expensive wine with the screw top, or vice versa. <laughs> Great, uh, babe. Now remember, but, um, it, it, the, either one has good or bad qualities to it. Like with the cork, you can get what is called cork paint. Yeah, hey. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin is saying he doesn't know if um, you should be the taste tester here. I don't know what he's talking about. Do you? <laughs> well, I'm not very well versed in wine. This, all these wines, like I said, are all under ten dollars. I got them all at BJ's. Um, you can, you know, get them anywhere. I do know that this rosé is a little tough to find, so let's let's just stick with the Menage a Trois Midnight Red Blend right now. So I should see some legs here. Let's see if I, I see any legs. It's a little difficult. Uh, show me your legs. Show me your legs. Show me your legs. Can you see my legs? Can you see it? No. No. Okay. Well, they're cute. I have to say. <laughs> But anyways, let's taste this. I have never tried this one myself. I've tried the Echo de Monte before. This one I have not tried. Oh, I like it. It's a good one. This is a good beginner wine. I personally am not a oh. beginner. I like it. Oh. This isn't bad at oh. all. I like this. It would probably be best. I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if it's with a steak. It would probably be best with like a barbecue. For uh, ladies, this wine is excellent with chocolate. Ooh. Yes, it is. Mm. I agree. The Reese's Peanut Butter Easter Egg. Yum. I just had one earlier <laughs> when I was sampling a different wine. But this is really good, especially under 10 bucks. I can... Mm. I like it. Brandy, good choice. Hope you're watching. Cheers. Yeah. The California wine. Um, Cheers, oh, the would be oh, cool. Brandy's watching. Hey, Brandy. What's shaking? 
Okay, so this one, this uh, 90 plus rose, actually, Heather, wait, back up. Where is this Menage mm -hmm. Trois from, and, and, and what's the deal with it, real quick? Uh, this is, um, well, it's aged in French and American oak barrels, first off, and um, it is uh, from, it's vintage and bottled by the Foley uh, Du uh, Winery in California. <laughs> Try to say that. That's a fancy. <laughs> I, want, I want to say Foley Du. And okay. it does not, it's phonetically not said, trust me. I had to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So I learned my French today. Well, good hey, job. Hey, let's try, let's um, try yeah, our yeah. rosé. But uh, it's, it's a good one. It's a little high in sugars, um, but uh, it's a good starter wine, and it'll go good with anything really dark meat, barbecue. Yep. And also, in my research, I um, found that you can also use it for a Bloody Mary. Oh, my God. Tell me. What? I heard about that. You were telling me earlier. A Bloody Mary? Yeah, so you can use the Menage a Trois. Um, midnight in lieu of vodka um, for your Bloody Mary in the morning. Ew. So your leftover wine, if you ever have any, which I never usually do, no. yeah, <laughs> you can have any in the morning to, uh, to make yourself a Bloody Mary. That is probably yeah, the most happens. disgusting thing I've ever heard, but I'm definitely going to try it tomorrow. Because when I'm done you tasting all these wines, right? I have to drink the rest of them tonight, right? <laughs> you do. Okay, so... You do. So I have to eat. Yeah. Don Crawley misses everyone so much at the gin mill. Who? Donna Conley. Oh, hey. Oh. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Hey, real quick. Don't forget, we need to get 100,000 views, or I'm sorry, subscribers on our thousand. YouTube channel. I'm sorry, 100,000. My, my uh, cameraman. What? No, it's 100,000, I was told. That's to make money, but to live. Oh, to go live, we need to have 100. 1,000 to go live. So please subscribe to MD's Gin Mill channel on YouTube and hit the bell for the alerts because we want to be able to do this longer, but they only allow us 15 minutes on YouTube. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Please, guys. Anyways, okay, moving on. So this 90 plus. What? Yeah. New, another fun fact about the Menage de Trois, um, the, uh, the double um, ballerina dancers on the front yeah. were made after, you know, the famous site ink block test, or ink block test, to make sure you're not crazy. That's my guess. Yep, yep, I got you. And yeah. it's, not for nothing, it's kind of a cool name. <laughs> okay. It is a cool bag. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, Hey. We're screwed to. <laughs> well, no, Lila, you're thinking things there. But I'm <laughs> wild, I can tell. <laughs> Guys, you've all been alone for a little too long no, in your quarantine. On this one. Yeah, so nice. Heather, Heather couldn't find this because apparently it's only at BJ's, at least around Florida. I'm not sure, but. And I'm trying to social distance. Yeah, this is a French rose. So we're going to try this out. It's It's got a screw top again. No matter what anyone says, when I show up at like you know someone's house and I got a screw top, I feel like I'm drinking Mad Dog 2020 or something. You know, like <laughs> it's embarrassing. No, actually, most wine woods, most wine woods are preferable in a screw top because you can you can save it from being oxidized and it lasts longer. Unlike your red wines that are only good for three to five days anyway, so it doesn't matter if they're pork or not. See, I hear you, but it still just looks cheap. Looks chintzy, you know what I'm saying? It's not, it's a myth. So over here on Instagram, we're checking in with everybody and uh, bling yourself. Hey, what's up, bling yourself? What's shaking? And uh, run, relves, something. I can't read it, I have no glasses on, but. Anyways, blame uh, yourself. What's up? Let's try some rosé. Annie from the gym from the gym mill is watching, and Amanda. Oh, hey guys, what's up, ladies? Anybody have any questions about anything? You want to say hi to anybody? Anybody from the gym mill? Bogies? Anybody in uh, California? Did you guys see the paddleboarder today that got arrested for paddleboarding? No. Now, Heather, I know, Heather, you live on the beach, so you've got yeah. an ocean in front of your house. They're saying that 
the spray that comes up like on your windows and everything could have coronavirus in it. Did you hear about this? I am Rona free. I'm living proof. I've not left my house for like two weeks and I've been on the beach. Everything is fine. Okay, good. Well, and plus they're not really letting a lot of people on there anyway, so. I hear you. Okay, so tell us about this 90 plus sellers. I know it's from the southeast of France on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, one of my good friends, Jenny, down in, uh, or up in D.C., was telling me about this. And you know what this is perfect for? My cameraman, Jim, his favorite thing, a charcuterie. <laughs> Jim, come on. Tell us how you say the Where's charcuterie. My favorite words in the world. <laughs> one of his favorite, the charcuterie. Let's try this out. Let's see. Oh, wait, we do have a question for Heather. Oh. Kevin wants to know, for someone who has not really experienced wine, what would you recommend to try to start with? Um, it depends on your palate, to be honest. Um, if, you're into, if, if you're sweet or savory, um, if you're more of a sweet person, I hate to say because I'm not really big on Rieslings or Moscatos, I would start with something a little sweeter. I know, right, Grace? <laughs> um, but... Uh, it, it just depends on, on your own taste buds. It's about just exploring and, and just trying different things. And what better way to do it than with cheaper wine? You can always get something on sale, buy one, get one, or something like this. Like we're telling you what everything's about. And uh, that's how you just live and you learn about it. I, I think Red Zinfandel is a good starter wine. A nice light red wine. Red Zinfandel. Red Zinfandel. Yeah, yeah, I like red red Zin. Zin. yeah. Actually, Judy. Um, I recommend too, like going out there. I know we can't do anything right now, but when we're not throwing it anymore, um, just trying out, like instead of going going out for the night, uh, going to a, a dinner and a wine pairing. That's how I've learned about my favorite wines ever. And then you learn about great food, and then what goes with wines and whatnot. Just exploring different things if you really want to try new new stuff and new wines. And actually, if I could add, I think. If I'm wrong, correct me, but it's not a red Zinfandel, it's just a Zinfandel because Zinfandel is red to start, and that's when they make the white Zinfandel is when they pick it earlier from what, the head of the Pinot uh, Noir grape, correct? Uh, I'm not really sure. I know we buy a couple bottles that are definitely called red Zinfandel, like the Seven Deadly Sins of Red Zin. Uh, I think it just has to do with um, how much of the, the actual skin of the grape they use, maybe, or the region. I don't, you know, that's that's one thing I'm not really uh, versed in is Zinfandels because that is not my favorite wine ever to drink. Like you won't ever see me drinking it. All right, guys. But, um, uh, I, I think it has to do with the grape. Real quick, it, uh, uh, sidebar, we've got to end the YouTube right now. So we're going to say goodbye to the YouTube followers because we can only do 15 minutes with YouTube. Hey. So if we get more followers, we can do more with YouTube. So sayonara, YouTube guys, please follow us. And we're going to go on with everybody else. we got Facebook.